What is going on, Print Fam? If you're new, my name's Cam. Welcome to The Print Life. Today, we are going to be reviewing the most incredible screen printing press on the market, the Anatol Thunder. Let's start by talking about build quality. It is built like a proverbial tank. Don't know if proverbial is the right word, but we're gonna run with it. It's a tank. Even though it's super heavy duty, it is deceivingly light when it comes to throw weight. We're gonna tackle that a little bit more here in a second. And just a real quick note about assembly. Once it comes off the truck, you'll have this thing more or less assembled in four hours. However, I'm, pr I'm fairly certain that they used all of the screws at Home Depot to crate this thing up. It took me longer to uncrate than it did to actually assemble it. There's really only a few things that you have to assemble. So let's, let's talk about the pallet arms first. You're gonna take the number one pallet arm and attach it to the carousel arm. You work your way around and get all that stuff attached. As long as you get the correct numbers lined up, you're gonna have perfectly leveled pallet adapters from the factory. Perfect. I opted for the M&R style or the slide style pallet adapters. The reason I choose to go this route is because the used market just has tons of offering in regards to this style of pallet. As opposed to utilizing plastic for the slider clamps, these are actually a cast metal. I don't know if they're aluminum or cast iron, but we've been using them back and forth, off and on, over and over again. And the pinch has still not worn down. Whereas with other ones that utilize plastic, uh, they seem to wear down pretty quickly, which means you're replacing them more often. My camera's shaking. There we go. Chill. The pallet deflection is virtually non-existent. Less pallet deflection uh, provides you as a print shop with crisper, cleaner prints because when you go to actually do the print, there's less movement between the screen and the pallet. The next thing that I wanna talk about is an often overlooked feature that you should look for when it comes to selecting a manual press, and that is the rotational weight. The lighter this is, the less fatigue you're going to experience over the course of a long print run. And the Anatol Thunder achieves that with these extremely robust pallet arms that are just like deceptively lightweight. The lighter it is, it also makes it easier to both throw it and catch it and index it. So the heavier it is, the harder it is to index and the harder it is to pull out of index. And now it's time to tackle the subject most of you are probably most interested in, which is the print heads. I do believe that although pallet deflection and rotational weight and all that stuff is extremely important, it all comes down to the way the print heads work, how the micros work, how your off contact adjustments and all that stuff function. Uh, and this thing has all of it in spades. The first part of the print heads I wanna talk about is the screen clamps. When it comes to screen arms, I have a preference for uh, side clamps as opposed to rear clamps. The reason I like side clamps is that once you've set your off contact, unless you need to make a, another adjustment for some technical reason, you can kind of set it and forget it. Whereas what I have found with rear clamps, a lot of the times you're having to readjust the tilt of the screen and the height of the screen to make up for maybe a slightly crooked uh, square bar. There's a lot of reasons why I prefer it. Now, when it comes to side clamps, I prefer them to be made out of aluminum as opposed to steel. Aluminum is a lot stiffer uh, and still has a tendency to flex. So if these side arms are made out of steel and I tighten this down, a lot of the times you'll see the bottom part of the clamp kind of bend down like that. It'll give way under the pressure. Aluminum is stiff, so no matter how hard you tighten it, you won't see the bottom part of the bracket flex, which means the screen doesn't move down, causing off-contact issues. Another bonus with having aluminum side clamps as opposed to like steel is that they're lighter, again, aiding in the throwable weight of the press. I mean, dude, this thing for sure, when it comes to the print heads, is the lightest one on the market. You, you can fling this thing around, it's almost weightless. And just to drive it home one more time, having lighter throw on the screens and the pallets 
reduces that fatigue that you're going to experience when you're printing thousands of shirts a day. Next, I want to talk about the springs that raise and lower the print heads. One of the most surprising features with this press that I did not expect was the new the spring mechanism which I've never seen before in conjunction with the lighter side clamps and just the overall lighter print head. When you combine all that together, the indexing of this thing is like so light to the touch. I've never experienced anything like it. With just a single finger, you can apply weight and it just falls right into the registration gate. And to pull it out of the registration gate, just one light little finger. No aggressive snapping out of the gates, not having to apply a ton of force to push it into the gate. It's just smooth, man. And you can see how it's just kind of floating there. Like it's on a cloud or it's a helium balloon or something. And it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you, you, you got a handle on it, it's like, I could, Gigi, working with print heads like this, I could never go back to the rear sprung print heads. There's just, there's just no way. And moving on to the registration gate. As far as the registration gate goes, it's got these nice, smooth, gradiated cutouts, which makes getting the print head into the gate smooth as butter. Even if you're way off axis, it just bumps it right in. Way off axis, bumps it right in. An interesting side effect of having pre uh, precision manufactured print heads with a precision bearing gate is something that's called all heads down printing. And it's as far as I know, it's only available on a couple of presses, the Anatol Thunder and the Antec Legend. All heads down printing, when done correctly, can not completely, but it can almost rival the same output speeds that an automatic press would, would uh, can do. Close, not exactly, but pretty close. The way it works is by having a printer at each station on the press. The first printer loads up their shirt, sets it, prints the first color, throws it under the flash, loads another shirt, prints that color, flashes it, and so on and so forth. While this printer is doing his thing and the screen is in the gate, the second printer is at this station and while that screen's in the gate, this printer can also put this screen in the gate without shifting the registration on that screen. He can do his print after it comes out of the flash, lift it, everyone moves the shirt over to that station, and you can also have a printer at this station. The ability to do all heads down printing is a nice bonus that comes with this press that's not available on a lot of other presses. And if you run into a situation where you need to output closer to automatic speeds, you bring a couple of helpers in and you just start cranking out colors and you can crank out a multicolor job pretty quickly. And finally, the meat and potatoes of any press review, the micros. I love the um, off contact adjustments that this press has. The main reason I like them is because it has these locking knobs on it that once you set it, you can lock it down and it's not gonna move out of your settings until you want to make the adjustment again. So you just back off the knob. This is your tilt, so you adjust your tilt where you want it, and you just lock that back down. And once that's set, if you feel like you maybe need to lower or raise the screen, you just back this off a little bit, kind of put, apply a little bit of pressure to the head here, get the height where you need it to be, and you lock it back down. And now I've adjusted my off contact and I can start tackling the micros. In regards to the micros on the Anatol Thunder, they are extremely good right now, but you do gotta keep in mind that this press isn't even a year old yet. Uh, when you usually start to see the slop and stuff like that, I mean, you know, two, three, four years in is when all those things start to happen as printers over tighten the kipping knobs or just generally beat the shit out of the press and don't take care of it. That's when things start to loosen up. But right now, the thing is tight. I find it difficult to showcase adjusting micros with a video camera. I'm gonna do my best and uh, we'll just see if uh, I can kind of demonstrate how good these are compared to everything else I've tested. When the knobs are tight, what I have found is all you need is a quarter turn. If you, if you loosen them any more than that, you're gonna get sag. Uh, and then when you go to tighten them back up, there's gonna be all kinds of screen creep. So what we found is you just do a simple quarter turn to loosen them up, you need a little bit more than that. 
uh, but there's still quite a bit of tension on the knobs. And that will give you the, the room you need to make your adjustments, or that'll loosen it up enough to make your final adjustments. And it's in. So that one's in there. Can you see that? There we go. And then you come down here to the bottom one. You gotta get it perfectly over the top for it to look. And it's in. The reason it's so easy to adjust the micros on this press is because of the fine threads in the adjustment knobs. They're just so fine that you do a big turn, but it just it barely moves the screen. So it gives you just more control over the movement. But I think you get the idea. And what I'll say in closing is that in clothing, in clothing, to close this out, I will say that as of right now, they are the best micros that I've used on a manual press. But I do understand and I'm keeping in mind that this press is brand new and it hasn't had the shit beat out of it yet. I'm interested to see what happens three or four years down the road. As long as we take care of it, I think that it'll, it'll hold up fine for, for years and years to come. But if we get a printer in here that has heavy hands and over tightens everything and things start to bend, that's when the micros can start to take a turn for the worse. I'm straight up, I'm greasy as shit. Look at me, I'm, I'm a grease ball. God dang, man. In closing, up to this point, the Anatol Thunder is by far the best manual press I've had the opportunity to use. And I've used a lot of them. I'm super happy with the purchase. I'm super happy that we have it in the shop. Now, I can't comment on any of their other equipment as far as the automatic stuff, but I do also have a, some really strong opinions about the dryer and that monster of a flash over there, but we'll cover that stuff in another video. Uh, thank you for being patient with the review. I know that a lot of you were waiting on it for a long time, but like I said before, I just wanted to put it through its paces, get some mileage on it before I report to you guys with, uh, with my findings. But thank you, Print Fam, for hanging with me. Y'all the best. That's it.